Hey y'all, it's Heal Heat time. Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and this is going to be a Heal Heat review of Raw 25. Now let's go right into it. First off we're going to start off with some of the stuff I liked, talk about some of the stuff I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to cover everything that happened. If I did it would probably take up the three hours the show did. We're going to start off with Shane, Stephanie, and Vince McMahon coming to the ring. Which leads to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Which leads to probably the hottest feud in Raw's history. Austin and McMahon getting a little throwback to that. Shane takes a stunner. Looks like Vince and Austin are going to celebrate. But uh-uh. Vince gets a stunner too. Shane gets another stunner just for being there. And we're off to a flying start. It looks awesome. We got exactly what we would want. We have Stone Cold Steve Austin coming in. And uh, being Stone Cold. Next up, another thing I liked. Even though I have no idea where he's going with it, the interview with The Undertaker, there was some telling things. He had a different jacket on than he left in the ring. He was not wearing his gloves and he was not wearing his hat. I like that aspect. It was kind of vague. He kind of said he was retiring, but he kind of left the door open for another match. I mean, personally, for selfish reasons, I hope he stays retired. I think the guy has given everything he could give. Uh, he's absolutely one of the greatest characters in the history of wrestling, one of the best wrestlers of all time. Definitely a surefire Hall of Fame guy as soon as he wants to retire. Um, and for selfish reasons, I would like to see him retire from active, active wrestling because that would mean I was present for his last match. Which, you can't really say that about a lot of guys and being able to say it about one of the guys makes it really something. Next up we have the, another thing I really liked, Roman Reigns versus Miz for the Intercontinental title. Miz picking up the win, kind of surprisingly, kind of not so much. This was a rumor that was going through the internet in the days leading up to it. Supposedly to open up Roman to have him be a contender for the Royal Rumble. I know, I know. Please don't burn down my video, or your house, or my house. I'm not, I'm just a messenger talk to Vince. However, I don't know it's going to go that route. I hope not. I hope they've learned from mistakes of past years, but who knows. Miz picking up the Intercontinental title puts him right back where he needs to be, uh, right back where he should be as an interesting character. I mean, what's not to like about the Miz as an Intercontinental Champion? You put him much up higher on the card. You put we seen that he didn't really work out as a world champion. Maybe he deserves another chance to run at that. But as an intercontinental champion with the Miz Taraj, with everything he does, he fits the role great. Now we're going to mention something. I really didn't like this. Woken Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. Now don't get me wrong. I think they're both fantastic. I like both what they do immensely. To have Matt Hardy lose a match against Bray Wyatt, I understand Raw 25 is important, but the Woken character should not have lost a match till WrestleMania. You have to establish that character as something that's to be feared, to be reviled, to be scared of, I guess, I don't know. Differ something different than what Matt was. Now... You made him lose to a guy who's lost to everybody who has zero credibility at this point in Bray Wyatt. I don't know where they go from here. I Maybe it was just to pop the crowd. Who knows? Um, was one of the few things that took place in the Manhattan Center, which 
If I paid what people paid for those tickets, I would be super pissed. But I digress. Throughout the night, leading up to what I'm going to talk about next, we had the APA and their ever-growing card game. You had guys like MVP. Shout out there. Welcome back, MVP. I hope he stays around. I love MVP, the performer. Um, Ted DiBiase, Titus Worldwide came in. Rhino and Heath Slater were there from the beginning. He's famously trying to win some money for his kids and losing everything, getting caught cheating. Uh, different guys coming in and out, different legends. It was a nice way that they kept going back to bring legends in, going back to this and bringing people in that normally didn't have time to fit in there. It also was a reminder to back in the Attitude Era when we would get these little cool segments like the APA Protection Agency that hang, they hung out in the back and they would have little cool segments all throughout the show, kept the continuity of the show. I think the show's been a little bit, Raw has been a little bit too homogenized and sometimes we need to bring back stuff like this. We need to bring back a gimmick that goes all show long but isn't necessarily a main guy gimmick. The Acolytes were never the main thing on the show. Farouk by himself, Ron Simmons, and JBL by himself were both main eventers, but not the team. They did have main event matches, but they weren't the main draw. However, they would have entertaining segments that would keep you tuned in to watch till the main draw came in. All this leads to Heath Slater and Rhino going down to the ring. You see them... Basically coming out with uh, the APA, a couple other guys, and then the Dudley Boys music hits. And I, I'm sorry, I love the Dudley Boys unabashedly. I know this was silly and I know it was just there for silliness alone. But the Dudley Boys hitting 3D, I'm never, ever, ever going to get tired of that. It's, I, it's one of my favorite moves of all time with probably... My favorite tag team of all time. Who doesn't love the Dudleys? Who didn't love seeing the 3D? Now, we also got a couple times they, they brought out the announcers. And how weird was it that Eric Bischoff got almost a louder cheer than Daniel Bryan? That was weird. They brought out some of the women. Noticeably absent was Lita. I, and Ivory. Our, Ivory was missing. Lita was missing. Victoria was missing. Uh, kind of a mixed bag. I'm okay with who they brought out, but there's some I would have wished to have seen as well. While we're talking about the women, sign of the night from the Manhattan Center. The Ico Pro sign was amazing. That was great. That was a nice touch by the WWE. But whoever brought that silk stockings is next on USA. That, kudos to you, my friend. You won the sign of the night. Probably the sign of the best sign I've ever seen in any Raw crowd ever. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the Silks Talkings is next, you're probably not as old as me or the person that wrote that because during the original run of Monday Night Raw, way back in the 90s, there was a show on USA called Silk Stockings. And oftentimes, as you see now when it says Chris Lee knows best or whatever they're promoting now, it would say on the bottom of the screen, Silk Stockings up next. Or the announcers would say it. So, kudos to whoever made that sign, because that was fucking awesome. You rock, guy. Or girl, whatever you may be. Loved it. It was the best sign I've seen in a long time. It immediately made me pop. It immediately made me laugh. Now, we get to the, the bread and butter, the highlights of the night. We have D-Generation X, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, the New Age Outlaws, and X-Pac all come out. And X-Pac says, we got a guy coming out, he's not part of DX, but it wouldn't be a party without him. Razor Ramon. And this is where the show went from underwhelming to pissing me off. We see Razor Ramon coming out in the Manhattan Center, which isn't a long walk at all. Maybe takes you 20 seconds to walk from the, the entrance to the ring. And they cut to a damn commercial in the middle of Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, one of the biggest stars in the history of Monday Night Raw, they cut to a commercial during him walking to the ring. I was so livid 
at this moment. It made me so angry. Why would you do that? What made them think that that was a good idea? Luckily, they come back. Scott cuts his promo, says his, hey, yo, all is well. Scott, <clears throat> the main, main reason why this is so disappointing is because over the last 15 years, we've only seen Razor Ramon and Scott Hall on TV three times on Raw. So... We've seen all the rest of the guys, ton, tons and tons and tons and tons. Give Scott his moment. He deserves it. Which leads them to bring out the club, or the Balor Club, however you would call them, Gallows, Anderson, and Finn. We see them tease them going to fight each other, which they end up too sweet in everybody, which leads the Revival to come out and... We went from a happy, great, good feeling moment with the Revot, with uh, the Balor Club and DX and Razor Ramon, and that was feeling awesome to possibly one of the most talented teams in all of professional wrestling. The revival coming out and getting buried, not only losing a quick two minute match against Gallows and Anderson, who I love as well, another great team, one of my favorites, obviously. Love them guys. The Revival come out, lose pretty quickly, take everybody's finisher except Scott Hall, and are given basically the Ascension role from Raw 1000, which, if you notice now, the Ascension's never recovered from that. Hopefully, the Revival, who I believe are way more talented than the Ascension ever were, I, I hope... I really hope that they they could come out of this because they looked stupid, in my opinion. I, I don't know. Then we get the ending of Raw with all the legends that are at the Barclay Center and all the wrestlers coming to the ring. You have Brock, Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, and Kane. Of course, they break down into a fight. Braun throws, Kane, throws Brock through a table. Ho hum. Boring, same old crap. Could have done so much more with this. You could have, what I would have done, and I, I'm not the person that suggested this. I've seen this on someone on Twitter, and I thought it was fantastic. They should have had Austin chasing Vince in the first part of the show from the Barclay Center, and then end the show with Austin and catching Vince running into the Manhattan Center and stunning him in the middle of the ring in the Manhattan Center. Would have sent the Manhattan Center crowd home happy. Would have sent the Barclay Center crowd home happy. Us at home watching would have been happy. I thought it was a great idea. I forget who said it, but it was an amazing idea, so I st I'm stealing it. Now, noticeably, there were some key stars of Monday Night Raw that were missing. Guys like Dave Batista, The Rock, Hulk Hogan, who it was long rumored might return on the night. Brett the Hitman Hart, who they showed a tweet from, but didn't show, didn't have the, I guess didn't want to put a video together for him or have him come on alive. And of course, the guy that everybody wanted to see and we knew was not going to happen, CM Punk. They should have reached out to these guys and at least had them do a little little buffer video that they could put coming back for break. You know, hey, this is The Rock. I'm on the set of whatever movie I'm doing now. Congratulations to Vince and now all the people watching Monday Night Raw for 25 great years. Keep it going for 25 more. If you smell what The Rock is cooking. Boom. 30 seconds out of his day. Hulk Hogan come doing a video. Hey, little Hulksters. Hulk Hogan here. Say you need your prayer. You know, you get the drift. You get what I'm saying. Dave Batista, Bret Hart, and of course, CM Punk, who I, we all knew wasn't going to be there. But it would have been nice if they could have found a way and said, look, let's set aside our differences for the fans for one night. We don't like you. You don't like us. The fans want to see you. Give them a shout out. We'll give you X amount of money, then go back to doing UFC. Would have been nice, but... Alas, it didn't happen. And then, overall, the whole show was disappointing to me. 
Another thing that really disappointed me that they didn't do is they never did like the Oscars do an in memoriam and in memory of kind of segment where they talk about people that we've lost over the 25 years. And yes, I know it's a sad and depressing thing, but when the Oscars do it, they make it classy. When the Grammys do it, they make it classy. When you're celebrating Raw 25, why not mention some of the guys that helped build Monday Night Raw and women that helped build Monday Night Raw to what it is and give them their proper respects. So since they didn't do it, I'm going to put it on the end of this video because I made a little one that took me probably 10 minutes to make that they could have done just as easily. They have way better stuff so <laughs> and way better access to all these people things. So I, I put together an in memory video for the guys that I thought helped Monday Night Raw and women that are no longer with us. Just a little something out of my respect for them. Overall the show was I would say underwhelming. Some spots of greatness, the 3D, the stunner, all the nostalgia, a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of, they could have, they could have announced some of the women that were there going into the Women's Rumble, they could have brought up people from NXT to make it feel special, but overall, lackluster show, it did not feel as important as it was. And it took away from everything for me. I just thought it was lackluster. Um, but basically, that's all I have to say about Raw 25. Stay tuned for that in-memory video. It's coming up right now.